Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my garage. I'm making this video today for those of you out there who are interested in getting into solar and you don't have a lot of money. Um, but I'm here to tell you that if you got $1,200, you can get started. You can build yourself a small system that you can expand as your power needs expand uh, for as little as $1,200. Uh, and, and let's jump right in and talk about what you got to have to make that happen. One of the first things you need to buy is obviously a battery. Uh, this is the Time USB 200 amp hour, 200 amp BMS Plus is what they call that, the Time USB Plus. Um, about 450 bucks. Uh, I've seen them for as low as 425. They are currently right now 475 on Amazon. Just watch for them to get down there into the 450 range. That's when I bought this last one. This is when it hit 450. Uh, when it hits 450 again, I'll buy another one. So we got four, uh, and you'll see why here as we get a little bit farther into this video. Um, because I am continuing to expand my system. Um, I'm making this video so you don't make the same mistakes that I made while we're doing this. Uh, and you won't waste any money. Uh, I'm going to have to buy other pieces of equipment that you won't have to um, if you pay attention here. So after you buy yourself that battery on Amazon here, you're going to have to buy yourself an inverter. This is a Guillendel, a 2000 watt Guillendel. I'm very happy with this product. I like this one over the other regular Guillendels is because it comes with a hardwire block. Uh, and you can hardwire right in there uh, and then run that wire wherever you need to run it. Uh, in this case, the hardwire block on this one runs uh, downstairs to the sump pump. Uh, so whenever the, the power goes out and I want to make sure the sump pump's going, I just go down and swap the plugs and fire up the Guillendel and we're up and running. Uh, this system over here is my emergency system. Uh, but anyway, let's not get off track here. So you bought yourself a Guillendel, you bought yourself a battery, you got to buy yourself a charge controller. Now, I recommend the EP Evers. Um, most of the people out there who have unlimited funds, they like to buy Victrons. Uh, Victrons are excellent, excellent charge controllers. Uh, they work really well. Uh, they come with a Bluetooth, so you can look at them on your phone. You're going to find out later on that that's a novelty that's fun for the first week or two, and you don't need that information after that. I mean, it's, it's really pointless. Um, you can get pretty much all the information you really need from a battery monitor. Uh, and if you look back through some of my previous videos, you'll see that uh, the brand that I like, and you can use your phone to look that up. And anyway, let's not get into that. Um, the charge controller you're looking for is an Xtran 4415N. That's X-T-R-A-N 4415N as in Nancy. Uh, it is a 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt charge controller. This one is not it. Uh, this is my one of the originals that I bought. Um, if EP ever is interested in me testing and promoting one of those, they can send it to me and I'll happily insert it into my system this spring when I actually go 48 volt and show everybody that it works and it works really good. Uh, and I'll keep talking about it. So. Hey, send me one if you want EP ever. We'll put it right here. But anyway, I recommend you buy one of those because they're about 170 bucks. And if you spend another 30 bucks, uh, get yourself an MT50 to go along with it. Uh, 200 bucks covers your charge controller with a unit that works well. Um, I don't know what it's going to cost you to do the Victron uh, and get the same kind of stuff. My guess would be 350. Uh, my personal opinion is. Take that 150 bucks and buy another solar panel because that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, I personally am recommending right now 24, I'm sorry, 12 volt, 200 watt solar panels. Um, you can get them for as low as 145 ish bucks for an HQST uh, panel. Uh, and the new power and rich solar panels are about 180 bucks um, right in there. And you can go up a little bit more right around 190 or 200. And, and get just about any brand you want. Uh, <clears throat> I recommend those over the 100 watt panels just because it's less stuff, less wires, less connectors. Um, it's a minimal amount to spend uh, if you're asking me for less complication. Uh, you got to build a rack or you got to store it all, put it all up on the roof anyway. So, you know, having less wires and connectors is less room for error. You know, um, just go that route. Uh, spend the little bit extra there in panels. Now, that gets you uh, a small, sing if you buy one single panel, that gets you a 200 watt up on the roof, 200 amp hour, 2000 watt system. Uh, and, and that will be fun to play with. Um, and you know what? 
I was happy with something along those lines to run my outside lights and charge my batteries here in the shop. And, uh, you know, uh, if you've got a small trailer, you might want to put all that together and use that inside your trailer. And you can charge your batteries. And, heck, in a pinch, with this inverter, you can run your power saw uh, and quite a few other things um, because that makes enough power to do that. Um, you know, I, I don't know what you're going to use this stuff for, but that's a, a possible use for a small $1,200 system. Now, if you want to expand from there, uh, you can double your capacity. You can buy another battery and another panel up under the roof for what? 700 bucks? Uh, and then you have a 400 amp hour, uh, 400 watt, 2000 watt system. That's going to work out pretty good. That was one of my main systems here for quite some time. Um, the only reason I keep expanding is because I got the bug. Um, and what happens is, is, and you'll find this out once you get doing this, in the summertime, you got power galore. Um, you have to find interesting ways to use up the power. And the reason we went from these to get bigger and bigger is because um, I had enough power in the summertime to run everything that I wanted to run, um, all the stuff that's on this load now and the outside lights, and put the refrigerator off-grid on just these two batteries. Um, now, it drained the batteries pretty fast, and it only lasted a couple days, but that gave me the bug, and that made me keep getting the systems bigger and bigger because I wanted to figure out what I had to do to off-grid the refrigerator, and here's your answer. Um, that's what this is actually for. For nine months out of the year, that system runs my refrigerator off-grid uh, with these two batteries, this inverter, uh, and I think there's 280 watts where the panel's up there on the roof, so it's not... Um, following the 200 or the yeah the the 200 200 rule um it's a little under paneled but uh the 200 200 rule works out really good here in central illinois and everywhere on the 40th that's 200 watts for 200 amp hours so nine months out of the year uh that's going to charge your battery back up in a day and a half uh so 200 200 is what we try to shoot for uh and, and that's basically what most of my systems are or at least that's what this system is and as we go forward and as i expand it that's what this system will stay because that's the good number to shoot for so now let's talk about when it comes time to expand you've spent 1900 bucks 1200 to get started another 700 to make you a 400 400 system this is the point where you have to actually decide are you going to go big and go 48 or are you just going to step up to the next rung um, like me uh, and go 24. Uh, the reason I have to step up to the next rung and go 24 is because I don't want to waste the money um, on this uh, and buy a new piece of equipment. Um, I mean, I may, I may end up buying a 4415N um, and putting it in place here. And if, if I'm lucky, EP Ever will contact me and send me one and I'll put it in place here. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but then at some point I can actually jump to 48 and, and I'll probably do that just so I can keep making these videos. But as it stands now, we're going to jump to 24. I'm going to have to buy another battery. I'm going to have to buy some more panels up there on the roof. Uh, but we're going to jump to 24 because this one is actually capable of doing it. So uh, I won't have to spend any more money on this. All I'll have to buy is a new inverter. Uh, and I'll buy a 24 volt Giandel inverter and we'll slip it right in here. Uh, and we'll add some panels up on the roof, and this system will be a 24-volt system. Uh, and that one will stay a 12-volt system as the backup system. Uh, but that's that's where we're going to go in the future. And to do that, um, for it's not going to cost a whole lot, uh, maybe $1,400, somewhere thereabouts, to, to make the jump up to 24 volts. Um, uh, if you start small, it's really cheap because you've already got two batteries, so you can just wire those together for 24 volts and all you have to do is buy one inverter um, and that's saying you're stepping up from the $1,900 system and buy the 24 volt inverter uh, and then you're ready to just continue to expand the system by either a buying two more batteries and adding more panels or b just by adding more panels up there on the roof um, to power your new 24 volt uh, system anyway it kind of slid off the path there a little bit um, all said and done, for somewhere less than 4000 bucks, you can put together a 24-volt, 400 watts, uh, 400 amp-hour system, which is where we're going to end up with. Um, 
I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm probably going to go to 600 watts up there, 24 volts first, with uh, 400 amp hours. Uh, and then we'll see how that goes along, and then I may add two more panels and end at 800 watts. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're going to go 600 with this charge controller because we can't go much bigger. Uh, but if uh, they send me or I buy a 4415N, it is actually capable of handling the extra um, wattage uh, this one is not capable of it uh, because it's an older model. Uh, you know, as things get newer, they get upgraded, and the new one is better. Uh, so I'm certain I'd like to have it, uh, but I'm not going to spend the money on it because this one is still working just fine, and I think it's efficient enough. So anyway, that's enough about uh, 12 and 24 volts. Um, let's talk about making that jump to 48 volts because that's where it gets tricky. So let's say you think everybody is right and 48 volt is the most efficient and that's what you want, but your load requirement, your energy requirement for these is small. That jump is easy if your requirements are small. Um, you can buy a Victron. Uh, Victron makes uh, the Phoenix. It's the 48 volt 1200. Uh, and that 1200 does not mean it's 1200 watts. Um, that's just the model number they give it. It is actually only 800 watts. Uh, and that's about 325 bucks. Uh, so if you are at the point where you have two batteries, uh, you've spent your 1200 to start with one and then the other 700 to get your second battery and your second panel, you have half of what you need. To go 48 volt, you have to buy two more batteries and you also have to buy two more panels. Um, so you'll have a 48 volt, 100 amp hour or 200 amp hour battery, which is huge. Um, and it's the cheapest way to get a 48 volt, 200 amp hour battery, by the way. Uh, a server rack battery is going to cost you about 1300 bucks a piece. Uh, so you're going to have 2600 bucks in a server rack battery. And if this one is 450 a piece, that's 1800 bucks for the 48 volt battery of the same equivalent power. <laughs> you're saving money by going this way. Yes, you have to wire them all together, but you got to wire the server rack batteries together too and you know just saying um it's definitely cheaper to go this way there are advantages to using a server rack battery and you can go watch one of their videos um they'll, they'll tell you all about them i don't know anything about them i don't have them but i do know these will work uh and eventually we'll work our way up to that anyway so if your requirements are small you can get uh the victron phoenix um but it's only 800 watts uh so you're not powering a whole lot with that um, you can step up a little bit. Ames Power makes a 48 volt inverter uh, that is a 3000 initial draw and a 1500 watt continuous, uh, which will work fine with the, the BMSs. Um, so that would be borderline to run everything that I have here. It would probably do it, uh, but it would be borderline. Uh, and I personally like the idea of stepping up to a 3000 watt inverter if I'm going to make my battery that big. Uh, but if your power requirements requirements are small, you can go 48 and go that way. Um, just know that once you get above that Ames Power 3000 slash 1500 watts continuous inverter, the inverters get expensive. Um, Ames makes a thousand watt, or I'm sorry, a thousand dollar 48 volt inverter that I believe is 3000 watts, but the thing costs a thousand bucks. Uh, you have to weigh whether or not you want to scrap all this and buy that hybrid, uh, which costs like eight or nine hundred dollars, uh, which has got the inverter included in it, like a three thousand watt inverter, and you can wire your panels up to it. It's got the charge controller included in it too. Um, but then you're scrapping the equipment that you bought before, uh, and I'm not a fan of that. That's that's wasting money. Uh, and on top of that, I don't like them because as a single unit. It's just that one thing, and when something goes bad, and it's all down. Um, I personally like the idea of having individual pieces, um, because then I can replace them as they go bad. Um, less pieces means more expensive to replace the single piece, whereas if this goes bad, it's only $160. Bucks. Um, but if it's all in one, it's eight, nine hundred bucks, $900, uh, 1000 bucks. Uh, I've looked at some of them. I've seen them as cheap as $650. I, I don't think I'd buy one of those. Uh, the ones I think I would maybe consider are eight or nine hundred dollars. Uh, some of them are a thousand bucks. Uh, you know, this way seems definitely more cost effective. 
you still get the power it still works um i don't have any trouble with it it, it works great here uh so i don't know it, 48 volt you, you know maybe you might want to plan that right out of the gate you probably aren't watching my videos anyway uh you know we like to put together small backup systems that you can use to replace a generac that's outside uh, you know, you can spend eight, nine thousand bucks on one of those. You're better off to spend eight, nine thousand bucks in a year. You can use it all year long, um, and, and it will take the place of that Generac. Uh, we figured out, um, if you watch some of my other videos, 15 days here. Um, this will go 15 cloudy days and power all my stuff. Uh, I haven't had to, and that means if the power goes out directly, it's probably five, six days worth of power stored right here. Um, how long, how, how many times in your life has the power been out for more than five or six days in a row? We had an ice storm here once it was out for four. Um, this is big enough to handle it. That's kind of the reason I build my systems the way I build them. So I don't have that issue. And if I do, I can use the generator that I got sitting right over there and a 40 amp charge, uh, a 40 amp battery charger to charge this one and a 30 amp battery charger to charge that one. And if you watch the previous video that was just released a couple before this one, I talked about that. Um, that's why we're doing what we do, uh, and I'm making those videos so you can keep track of, you know, how big you want your system to be. All right, well, I've rambled on long enough. No, the 48 costs a lot of money. Uh, 24 volt is within reach and easy to expand to, uh, and you're going to watch me do it because I'm going to do it in the spring. Um, I personally think if you're going to do all this, your best bet is to have a small off-grid system, and then if you want... Um, because I may very well do this myself, put together a small grid tie system too. Because I, I think in the summertime, maybe three or four panels up there on the roof uh, with a small, little small grid tie system might help offset some of the some of the cost of my big um, two and a half ton air conditioner. So, uh, and then we're really, uh, really low on the utility bill. But all right, I've rambled on a la uh, long enough. Have a good day, everybody, and a better tomorrow. I'll see you.